If you like high kill games, soaring to the skies, and fast paced action that doesn't stop all game long, then look no further than the Season 9 new legend, Valkyrie. Valkyrie fits a unique role in the meta of Apex Legends and brings a type of playstyle that we really haven't seen before in a new legend. My name is Tim Provision and we are back with another master guide to get you on your way to mastering Valkyrie in Apex Legends. As with all master guides on the channel, check out my pinned comment down below for any and all adjustments to Valkyrie since the launch of this video. This is where we will keep you informed on any changes to her and how she is faring in the meta of Apex Legends. Valkyrie's abilities are fairly simple on paper, but actually are very extensive and there's a lot to know about them, so let's jump right into it. First up, Valkyrie's passive abilities. She has three main things going for her. For starters, she's a member of the Recon class due to her ability to take height fairly easily with her jetpack. This means she can ping beacons around the map and give her team that valuable next ring intel. Second to this, she has a fighter jet type of heads up display when flying and dropping to the ground. This gives her great information to enemy locations by highlighting them while she is flying through the air. It should be noted that this ability will be active on the initial drop while dropping from balloons and around the map while using Valkyrie's ultimate ability. Targets can be highlighted up to 225 meters away and you can highlight both enemies flying in and enemies that are already on the ground. Not only are targets highlighted on your screen, they are also tagged on the map for both yourself and your team. One big thing to note about this ability is that you must have a visual line of sight on the enemies, so if the enemy goes behind a mountain or inside a building, then they will no longer be highlighted. Finally, Valkyrie's main passive ability is the jetpack called VTOL Jets. This passive allows her to fly around the map with a limited duration due to the ability's consumption of fuel. Activation of this jetpack can be done by simply performing a double jump. Tapping or holding jump while in the air will activate her booster. It is worth noting that in the settings you can change the jetpack control to be hold or toggle. I personally found it easier to have this setting on hold so I could release the jump button when I was done jetpacking. Each activation of the booster will use an initial burst of fuel and then holding the booster will continue to consume fuel. The initial burst will use about 10% of the fuel, so be mindful of how much you are spamming the ability. Rapidly tapping the boosters can be useful, but at a cost. After you are done using the booster, it will take 78 seconds for the fuel to start recharging, and a fully depleted fuel bar will take 10 seconds to fully recharge. This means players on empty will take about 18 or so seconds for their VTOL jets to get a full tank back. While flying around, players can choose to toggle their flight mode from direct to level, meaning you can travel just horizontally or you can travel directly where you are looking. There is no height limit to your VTOL jets, but typical out of bounds areas will still force players back into the area of play. After you are done boosting with the jets, Valkyrie has a slight floating effect when falling back down to the ground. This may seem small, but it is absolutely huge because it cuts Valkyrie's momentum and speed down and does briefly make her easier to hit than a legend that is just jumping off of an object. It is very noticeable here in the firing range if we compare Valkyrie just falling and then Valkyrie boosting and falling. The main way the VTOL just is balanced is that while boosting, players can neither use their weapons nor grenades or healing items. And even after a player finishes boosting, it takes a brief moment for Valkyrie to bring up her weapons or grenades to use them. Because of this, players should take extreme care when using the VTOL jets around enemies and plan accordingly. In addition to this, the VTOL jets are extremely loud when using them. You will be able to hear the jets quite far away, and because of this, you will be quite noticeable to enemies in the vicinity. The one thing you can do while boosting is use Valkyrie's tactical ability, the Missile Swarm. The Missile Swarm is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It shoots a swarm of 12 missiles at your enemies and has a 30 second cooldown timer. The swarm goes in a more or less straight line or in a slight arc from Valkyrie's position and you should take care when shooting in a more enclosed area because it will do damage and stun yourself if you do not have enough headroom. There needs to be a decent amount of headroom above Valkyrie for this ability to work properly and for its overall effectiveness, the swarm is best used while already floating with Valkyrie's jets. The range on this swarm is anywhere from a minimum of 10 meters away up to 100 meters away. The damage from this swarm is modest and does a small 25 damage on an initial hit and then an additional 3 or so damage per missile hit that connects to your enemies. For the most part, you will not be able to do more than 30 to 35 damage with a single use of this swarm. The most important part of the missile swarm though is the arc star type of stun effect that you get after using it. So not only are you doing a small amount of damage to your enemies, you are also leaving them stunned and dazed allowing you to make that critical push to finish off a single enemy or a whole team of enemies. 
The tactical ability can be cancelled from the ground by jumping and activating the VTOL jets, and it can be cancelled while already boosting by punching or kicking. It is also worth taking a moment to state that if you are floating in the air with your VTOL jets, you can activate and hold your tactical ability to drastically lessen your fuel consumption while you are flying. This is great to try and spot enemies that are around you while also saving your consumption of fuel. You will still use up a little bit of fuel, but at a much slower rate, However, do take note, you do move much, much slower when you are holding this tactical ability down and floating in the air. I just wanted to take a second to say if you are enjoying this video or just want to support me, hit that like button. And if you have any questions on Valkyrie or anything else in Apex Legends, we stream live on Twitch nearly daily, so head on over there and say hello. The final ability to discuss for Valkyrie is her ultimate ability, the Skyward Dive. This ultimate has a 120 second charge time, and the Skyward Dive allows both Valkyrie and or her teammates to redeploy to the skies. After activating this ability, there's a brief three second charge up where Valkyrie will get ready to ignite her main booster. Once fully charged, the player has the option to boost up into the air at extreme heights. Before boosting into the air, teammates can have the option to attach onto Valkyrie and also redeploy with her. Extreme care should be taken when getting ready to ignite the booster. If Valkyrie takes any damage before igniting and using her main booster, it will knock her out of this ultimate and put her ultimate at a 75% of a full charge. This means players will be prevented from using the ultimate again for 30 seconds. Valkyrie can also cancel the use of this ultimate manually, and it will again put her charge at 75%. The ultimate ability goes much higher than the majority of jump towers on the map, and it is an amazing way to get just simple rapid transportation from fight to fight. When testing the ultimate out next to what I believe is one of the tallest jump towers in the game at Energy Depot, we were able to soar up even higher than this already extremely tall tower. The height this ability brings you to seems to be the same height every time, however this is relative to your current position though. So launching from height or from a roof of a building will give you a little extra height on your rotations. Let us now go over a few more playstyle tips for you. As for Valkyrie's VTOL jets, I highly recommend using the jets in short bursts to redirect your movement with the jetpack rather than hard pressing the boosters down. The ability to tap the boost to avoid fire in close range fights is a viable option and a great way to get instantaneous flanks and avoid damage like this missile swarm in this clip. Similar to this, being able to quickly move from low ground to high ground makes for a very satisfying way to play the game. A quick 2-3 to three boost like here in the states allowed me to get into the action very quickly and catch the enemies off guard much faster than if I didn't have this passive ability. On the other side of things, a Valkyrie that is soaring through the air with too much height and with enemies nearby makes for an easy to hit target and I again recommend you avoid doing this when enemies are nearby. Valkyrie as an overall legend makes the entire game on all the maps more accessible and it is really evident on Olympus where areas around such places like Bonsai are completely more accessible. While this is great for Valkyrie, care should be taken as enemies will now be able to open up more areas on the map that were previously hardly used. Similar to a Horizon Gravity Lift, Valkyrie also has the ability to avoid damage from ground-based ultimates, abilities, or grenades, and even maneuver in ways that never would have been possible with the majority of other legends in the game. As for Valkyrie's tactical, there aren't too many specific examples to note. I highly recommend though that you use the tactical when you are on the closer side of things to really capitalize on the stun effect on enemies. Using the missile swarm at range is kind of a waste unless the enemy has no cover, however even then, enemies can still get out of the path of it because they will see it coming and it does take a brief second to reach them. But who doesn't like to have a more or less free arc start every 30 seconds? And I'm looking at you Fuse. As for Valkyrie's ultimate, the possibilities are really going to be endless. You can use the ultimate just as a way to get some recon and information for your team, or you can use it to rapidly transport yourself and your team big distances. The best part of Valkyrie in my opinion for pubs is really going to be the ability to push from team to team and to keep the action going. Don't be afraid to use her ultimate ability often because the timer is fairly short and to be creative like this redeploy in Hammond Labs, Valkyrie's ultimate really makes for some intense cinematic experience that really isn't possible with any other legend in the game. Since Valkyrie has a lot of counters when jetpacking such as slightly being more revealing when jetpacking at great heights and just how loud it is, another big thing to be aware of is that in some high end movement types it will be a little bit more limited with Valkyrie. Typical bunny hopping can be tough to do as often the jetpack will want to activate and similar to this, wall jumping requires much more precise timing to do effectively. So what legends will pair well with Valkyrie? To be honest there aren't too many specific legends that will benefit from Valkyrie specifically. 
For the most part, Valkyrie's abilities cater to every legend in the game, with the exception of her VTOL jets. Because of this, Valkyrie makes for a great teammate that can provide bonuses to everyone. However, I can absolutely see Gibraltar being a solid teammate to Valkyrie. The dome shield will allow Valkyrie and her team to escape with her ultimate while being inside the cover of the dome shield. Similar to this, Bangalore smoke could be helpful, but not quite as useful and effective as Gibraltar's dome shield. The only other legend I could see being slightly helpful is Watson, as Watson could stack some ultimate accelerants for both herself and for Valkyrie. This would allow for more uses of Valkyrie's ultimate to keep the action flowing. Valkyrie in Arena is absolutely a viable option, however, her overall kit is slightly more limited than it is in the Battle Royale. Valkyrie's ultimate is fairly cheap, only 200 materials, but hardly worth taking in my opinion. Most of the maps have fairly easy and quick rotations, and I don't really see many, if any, scenarios where spending materials on her ultimate is going to be worth it. Since arena games generally have enemies picking from range, Valkyrie's jets should again only be used for quick movement and redirects to better enhance her in fights. I do think that buying an extra tactical ability each round could be a great thing to have, as playing off of a stun is a solid way to win matches in arena. So where does Valkyrie stack up in the meta of Apex Legends? For both pubs and ranked battle royale, I see her being an absolute powerhouse, a top 5 if not top 3 legend in the game where her abilities will enhance herself and her team in the meta of Apex Legends. On top of this, and a little bit more personal note, I have been having an absolute blast playing with her and she creates a lot of enjoyment for the player using her, and unlike Horizon at launch, she isn't nearly as annoying to fight against. And also unlike Fuse from the previous season, she is a much better contender in the overall meta of Apex Legends. As for Arena though, I think she is a little bit more in the middle of the meta, but only time will tell in this brand new mode. So that is everything to get you on your way to mastering Valkyrie in Apex Legends. What do you think of her? Drop a comment down below and if you ever are looking for someone to play with or just want to talk to someone about Apex Legends, join our community discord. Links for everything are down below in the description and until next time, I will see you live in the Twitch streams. Peace out.